here we have a Dell Alienware 17 uh, free. We're going to open up and explore the inside uh, to uh, free the same laptop. So you're going to have to flip your laptop to the back first. And we're going to need to remove two screws to access the back panel. Please note these two screws actually stay on so they don't actually come off, they stay on the back cover. So after you remove the two screws, you have to lift it up. Just put your hand underneath it and it comes off. So here's the hard drive. Here's your M.2 hard drives. Please note the R2 has extra two slots for hard drives, or M.2. Here's the RAM, there's only two slots, and here's the wireless card. So to remove the M.2 hard drives, there's one screw. After you remove the screw, it pops up. Like I said before, if you have the R2, the R2 has four M.2 slots, but the R3, the newer version, only has two. So after you remove the screw, just lift it up and wiggle it out and it comes out. Now we're going to remove the 2.5 inch hard drive. We have to remove the cable holding the 2.5 inch hard drive down. And then there's four screws holding the hard drive. After you remove the four screws, just lift the hard drive up and it comes off. This is a 2.5 inch hard drive at 9mm thick. So there's two RAM slots only. So you push the two sides out and the RAM pops up. So with two RAM slots means you can get 32 gigs of RAM max, I believe, which is um, this is DDR4. Please note. If you're on the R2, you only can get 16 gigs max because DDR3 only goes up 8 gigs a stick. We're going to have to remove all these cables. So this cable is should be the backlight keyboard cable. The next cable is the keyboard cable. So the third cable should be the mouse pad and the fourth cable is the mouse pad lighting. Yeah, that cable I just removed with the battery. So this 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 is supposed to be the fifth cable here is the mouse pad lighting. And the sixth cable, which is now that is the DC power jack. Now that we remove that, we're going to remove the wireless card. There's one screw holding the wireless card down. After you remove the one screw, to remove the wireless card, you have to pull out your antennas. We're going to have to pull out the antennas anyway to remove the back cover. There's a hole here, so you just lift it up and leave it there. So you, when you lift up the back cover, it can go through the hole. There's also a cable here. This should be the fan cable. And there's another fan cable on the other side. There's one fan for the graph card and one fan for the CPU. Please note, I'm not going to remove the wireless card. They got double-sided sticky tape on the bottom. And it's extremely hard to remove. So what I just showed before now is to remove the back cover, we're going to have to remove all those screws that I'm pointing out. When you remove all these screws, please note the screws actually have different color. 
uh, the screw I've removed now and the one before that they're actually black and this screw here is actually grey to match the colour of the back just make note of that so this screw here is the long longest screw the fourth screw here is really long and the fifth screw as well is also really long so after we remove all the screws we're going to remove the keyboard surrounding we actually don't remove the back we actually remove the keyboard so we're going to have to lift it up and pry the keyboard open So I've just gone to show you the screws. So the long screws is a lot longer than the normal ones. So the long screws go here, there's only two of them. And the small screws go around the sides. Please note there's also a colour, like I told you before. So now that I have removed all the screws, we're going to pry the keyboard. We're going to use our prying tool to pry the keyboards around. I'm going to take it off screen as it's easier for me to do. So now that I've completed it, after you pry open your keyboard, don't just rip it off as there's cables attached on the bottom. Just to show you, there's actually a cable there where my finger was. So here you go, there's a cable here. I'm just pointing out with my screwdriver. Please note, it's going to be a bit hard to remove if you have removed the first time. They have sticky tape covering the connector to the connected area. So you have to go pull off the sticky tape before you can remove the cable. So here's a different view of it, the same cable, as you can see here. First of all, you have to peel off the sticky tape, connecting the cable to the connector. The sticky tape is connected to the cable itself. So after you, remove, after you remove the sticky tape, you can pull the cable out. Pulling out from the bottom is easier than pulling out from the top. But removing the sticky tape from the top is easier, as you can see what you're doing. So here we go. Just to show you. And here's the sticky tape. I'm trying to flick it back and forward. hope you can see it.
So this is the battery. So here's the fan. Here's the other fan. This here is the graphic card. These these black dots are the RAM for your graphic card. This is your CPU, it's on the other side. Now we need to remove to remove the screen. To remove the screen, there's two screws here. And there's three screws inside. I'm just trying to get it to focus. So here, we need to remove these cables. So this is the wireless cable, the wireless antenna cables that I'm trying to route through that we removed from the back earlier. This is sticky tape, it just holds the cable down. We need to out-route these cable. We also need to, do, to remove this cable as well. This cable is the lighting control for your LCD screen. Controls all the lights on your LCD screen. Same with most of the cables on this laptop. It's connected to sticky tape. The cable has basically sticky tape to it to connect it to the connector. You need to remove the stick tape first and then you can pull out the cable. Same here. This is the LCD, LCD cable. The LCD cable has a latch. You need to lift up the latch first before you pull out the cable. It doesn't have stick tape like the rest. I'm just going to try to show you the latch. I don't know if you can see it. So now we need to remove three screws on each hinge to actually remove the hinge. Now that we remove all those screws, just give it a bit of wiggle and it should come out. And here we go. We're now going to remove the motherboard. To remove the motherboard, I'm going to have to remove 
six screws holding the motherboard down. This cable here is the battery cable. This cable here is the speaker cable. You're also going to have to remove this cable as well. It's a bridging cable to your daughter board. It also has a latch on it. So I'm just pointing out the screws that you have to remove to remove the motherboard. Now we have removed all the screws, it's actually a bit hard to take out the motherboard. So to take out the motherboard, you actually basically have to push the plastic cover out, so the motherboard can go out, and then slide it out like that. It comes off one side easier than the other side. So here we go, we have to remove these screws here to remove the heatsink. When you remove the screws for the heatsink, you have to, you can remove it in any order, but when you put it back on, you have to put it back in order so it can spread out the thermal paste evenly. When you remove the heatsink, you have to reapply thermal paste as when you put it back on, it will create unevenness and gaps in the hole. This thing here is the BIOS battery. So when you clean the heating, you have to reapply thermal paste. Don't be cheap on your thermal paste. Thermal paste doesn't cost a lot. It costs around ten dollars per tube, and it lasts with by fifteen usage. I'll show you later where the numbers are on the heatsink. It shows you which screw you have to screw in first to spread out the thermal paste evenly. So now that we remove all the screws, here we go. We're going to have to clean the old thermal paste off. Just use a cloth or a towel to do it. You don't need any special alcohols or liquids to do it. Just a cloth and just clean it up as best as possible and it's good enough. So I'm just pointing out the numbers here on the heatsink. That was number four, one, two, three. It's number five, six, seven, and eight. I 
probably just got the order wrong as I can't see myself but just follow me when I screw it back on and you'll be able to tell you'll be able to tell which screw you have to screw in first I just took the heatsink off the screen as it's easier for me to clean off the screen with a towel make sure when you clean your motherboard that your thermal paste doesn't drop back onto the motherboard and here you go it's all clean now just try to clean it as best as you can as you can see on my graphic card there is some residue left over but that's fine only the shiny top part is important the sides aren't that important so here you go here's my heatsink it's all nice and clean now don't peel off the blue things the blue things are thermal pads it's used to cool your rams or your memory for your graphic card and other components so now we're going to reapply thermal paste onto the motherboard so I'm using Noctor NTH1 like I said before don't be cheap on thermal paste this only costs $10 per tube and it lasts around 15 times of usage for your graphic card you want to put half a rice grain size in the center do not spread it out and for your CPU you want to put basically the same half a rice grain in the center and not spread it out we want the heating to spread it out when we put it on and when we screw on the screws it will spread it out automatically and evenly so the idea is to place your heatsink on top but do not try to push it down just align it and let the screws push it down itself so just follow how I screw it in this is number one I will screw in the screws in order before I pointed out I didn't point it out in order as I was a bit confused myself I couldn't see the screws on the video And that's about it. Thanks for watching.